Hello, BC, friends, family, and fellow space cadets. I hope you're well this week. Uh, you might notice I'm actually, I have music playing this time. Um, a couple of episodes ago, I got busted. And I was just, it was just playing in the background. It was a uh, Shock D record. And um, they didn't take it down, but they gave me a copyright violation. They somehow they knew that I was playing this music. So that's the only one I've ever been busted on of that. So I've got, today I'm, I'll just go ahead and say I'm playing some Larry Coriel and the 11th House. And um, so we're just kind of uh, getting our fusion on, more like funk, really. And a couple of, when was it? Like maybe two months ago, my Halloween episode that I had, I, I don't know if you've, if you've seen it, I've re-uploaded it since. But it had a, uh, at the very end, we did a Ramones video. It was like a little tribute to the Ramones. And it was just silly, you know, cutting up a bunch of fruits and vegetables and stabbing them and, you know, chopping up pumpkins with a machete and putting eggs in the microwave, you know, that type of silly things. But it worked really well to Pet Cemetery, And um, it was up for a while, like four months, eh, maybe three. And then... One day I looked at it and they had blocked it all over the world. So I just went ahead. I took that one down. I chopped the end off of it so the video wasn't there and re uploaded it. So when you come to the page, you'll see it. And there's a little message explaining this. It doesn't have a lot of views because I, I assume that you guys have already watched that one. So, but anyway, let's. Uh, last week we were talking about the sleeves that I ordered. I ordered. 20, excuse me, 200 sleeves, 100 sleeves, on January 3rd of this year, and as of today, I have not received them. Um, the guy called me, or the guy emailed me, and said, sorry man, you know, I keep sending these to the post office, and they keep rejecting them, because they say it's not media mail. So he's trying to ship a media mail, because that's the cheaper way, and the deal was, he's got a deal, I've ordered from him before, $17.99, free shipping for 100 three, three milliliter millimeter s sleeves so in the meantime I ordered from this other guy on eBay and it was the same deal 1799 free shipping three millimeter sleeves a hundred of them and I got them like within three days I ordered it on Saturday I got it on Wednesday and when I opened it up I saw this now this is not significant as far as the music goes but that's the way he got around the media mail. If anybody was to, were to open up the package, or scan it, I don't know if they scan it, I don't know how they know that you don't have media in there. He had a record in there. Therefore, it was legal. So, I thought that was a nifty idea. Don't know if I'm exposing anything, but... Um. All right, so, I do have a stack of cool records for this week. And let's see, let's start out with uh, this one. It is a split between The Mirrors and a band called Central Stodet. The Mirrors are from Phoenix, Arizona. Central Stodet, I'm not sure. I think they're from Sweden. You know, it has that, uh, su yeah, Sweden. That's, what, that's where it, it, they assume, I assume that they're from because of where this was recorded. So, it's a split between uh, Central Stoda and The Mirrors. It's an album that I cannot pronounce. It, either it's made up or it's in Sweden. And it's, so far, it's my album of the year. I've got about five albums that I bought in 2017, and this is the best so far. I have another one I'm gonna show you here in a minute that's, that's good, but not quite as good as this. Um, there's not much to say about it. It's very cohesive. Both bands sound very similar, so going from side one to side two, you don't really notice a switch. The Central Stodet side has got more of an acid -y guitar, while the Mirrors is more fuzzed out. But it's all really good psychedelic kraut rock, you know, fuzzy psychedelia. Um, it's all, I don't recall hearing any words or singing in it, so. There you go. <clears throat> and the second album so far this year is from a band called Sundays and Cybele. And the album is called Systems and Chaos. And it is from one of my favorite record labels. There's nothing there. 
spoken out. And that is Beyond Beyond is Beyond, and they make music for heads by heads. And that says everything, you know. I mean, the, the music you're going to get by them is, is adventurous, trippy, psychedelic, um, challenging. I mean, that's what we like around here. And a lot of the guys on the, on the vinyl community love this type of music. Now, not everything that Beyond 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 releases is good, but you just got to listen to the samples and make your own decision. But they release a lot of good stuff. And yeah, this is beautiful. It's gold and black, kind of like a oil slick on something. But it's just it's really nice. And this album is by, these guys are from Japan, I think they formed in 2004, and they have several albums out, and they're all really good. It's, um, it's your typical really good Japanese psych album. There's some singing, but it's more, the singing is more of an instrument than anything else. And I think the, the people that are making the best psychedelic music and have been for, for years are the Japanese and the Germans. The Swedish are really coming up. You know, there's a lot of folks there in Europe that are really coming up. Greece and the Italians. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming out of Europe that's really good. America. I mean, we got some good bands like the Mirrors. They're from America. Uh, Carlton Melton is another good band. And that's just right off the top of my head. I can't think of any more. But I still, at this moment, it's the Japanese and the Germans. So last week I went shopping at my favorite record store I told you guys about that and told you I would show you what I got so the incredible string band the 5,000 spirits and the album cover is awesome I've always thought this album cover was just really trippy one of the best as far as a psychedelic album cover goes uh, the music is psychedelic folk kind of that weird folk freak folk that some folks call it and it does it gives you the impression when you're listening to it you know they're all singer songwriter songs but it's kind of I don't want to say depressing but it just makes you feel like you're sitting out in the woods huddled under a tree with moss all over the place and just a little bit of just rain coming down just gray skies and rain it, that's the kind of music that this is the kind of music you would listen to in an environment like that. Like when I lived up in Portland, I really got into freak folk. And that was at the turn of the century. We're talking like 2000 to 2004. They were putting out a lot of good albums. Espers and uh, Versaxa. I can't remember all who else. Uh, but there was a lot of great bands. Sharon Krauss. And maybe it was because of the environment. It rained every day and it just suited it second album I got was Frank Zappa's Lumpy Gravy. And I got a good deal on this. This is like a 71 refresh, re reprint. And if you haven't heard the album, they say it's more, it's more challenging listens, it's more musical concrete. I kind of disagree with that. It's, there's more talking in it. There's still music, you know, underneath all the talking. It's almost like a comedy album, but not really. It's a lot of his social commentary. He's a smartass, and that's the the core of Zappa. When you get down to it, a lot of people don't like his humor or think that comedy and rock and roll don't mix. But when, once you get Zappa and you get where he's coming from, it clicks. And this is just one of those albums. It's a great album. Yeah, that came out in 1969. Uh, the third album I got was uh, Pierre Morland's Gong. Still on the fence over this one. Uh, this one is called Downwind. I have Timefall. Yes, Timefall is what I have. It's the one that came out, I think, after this. And I like that one much better than this one. There's singing and lots of different variations of music going on on this album. Not just your typical fusion and psychedelic instrumentals, but they sing. There's some singing on it, and to me it just doesn't work. They uh, have a song called Jingo Loba, which was actually 
done by Santana. Now, it's not originally a Santana song, but it was on Santana's first album. This one here. And it was just called Jingo. And a lot of people has, have covered this song. It, who wrote it? It was a Nigerian gentleman. He wrote it in the 50s. And it's really popular. But for this album here, in the context of the other music, it just doesn't work. I don't care for it. It sounds almost exactly like Santana. So, and I'm not saying Santana's a bad thing, it's just, like I said, the context, I don't know. The fourth album I bought last week was Pink Floyd, Animals. Great album, mate. There's not much more you can really say about it. It's just a fantastic record. I love the song Dogs. I, you know, I love it when they expanded and they went, you know, above 15 minutes. This is like, what, 16, 17 minutes? But uh, it, it's their classic. It's a great album. So uh, I got it cheap. I got it for 12 bucks. It's a real nice, clean copy. The cover's a little bit, it's very good, not very good plus. But it's another thing about my record store that I like is fair prices most well there's a record store that i know of that i don't go to anymore that if they were to see that come in like in a pile of records they bought they wouldn't even look twice at it to see if it was any good they would probably just slap a 28 dollars price tag on it and say there you go because i've seen that this many times at their store i just wouldn't buy it it just wasn't good enough and i just didn't want to pay that much money and that's the key. If you hold out, you'll find a better deal someplace. And then just for my listening pleasure this week, um, I brought out some Osibisa and their second album, Oyaya. Artwork by Roger Dean is immediately recognizable. This was before Yes, but he... It's kind of like you know what's in a Roger Dean cover art album. Just something special and magical. And this is psychedelic Afro pop, and it is fun. It's good. The guys were brilliant songwriters, and they performed it great. I mean, it's a fun album. If you haven't heard heard of um, Osibisa or this album in particular, listen to it. Go to YouTube and check it out. See what you think about it. It's fantastic. And these are relatively cheap. I think I picked this one up for like three bucks. Also, uh, the Steve Miller Band. Their first album. The Children of the Future. This is a good album. You know, as far as a debut album. The first side is like one giant lump of psychedelia. Just beautiful for the times. And the second side is more bluesy. So I listened to side one more than side two. When did this come out? 68 maybe? It was the late 60s. But yeah, it's a good album. Check it out, listen to it. Especially if you like the older stuff. Um, another one that I brought out, was listening to is Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. This is a fun album. It's, it's on the progressive side, but it's it's fun, you know, it's something different. And what he did was he got, he did a fusion of a novel and a recording. And he had Richard Burton actually recording excerpts of the book and different musicians uh, performing on this thing. And it just, it works out. Let's see, came with a little booklet. And it's got a bunch of cool trippy photographs you know for your listening experience when you're laying on the floor listening to this you can trip out on the photos and he was who let's see who was on this Julie Covington David Essex Philip Lynott Justin Hayward Joe Partridge Chris Thompson Jeff Wayne and Richard Burton of course but just as far as being fun it's not a heavy progressive. It's nothing like that. But it's just a, a fun album. I would definitely pick that up. And let me see. There's one more that I, I left over here. And it is 
George Carlin, AM, FM. You know, not much you can say about Mr. Carlin is you listen to it and you're laughing the whole time. He's got, so, let's, you know, like we talked about Frank Zappa, he's got his own social commentary and it's, it takes you to the time of the early 70s, you know, what was going on and what was taboo then and what's not taboo now. Um, he's got, let's see, what's on here? Sex and commercials, drugs, birth control, son of a wino, the divorce game, let's make a deal, the 11 o'clock news, all these are really good, so every once in a while I gotta bust out the comedy, have some fun. That's it. That's all I have for this week, as far as my musical listens see what else has been going on. I got a new job and I know that some of my co-workers, ex-co-workers, watch this. So hey man, I'm doing fine. You know, basically Sandra and Nathan, I'm doing fine. Hopefully you guys are doing well. The new gig is great. Really digging it. Um, and that's it. Oh, hi to John and Shelly. They're friends from my teenage years. So I know they watch as well. So you guys have a great week, and we will catch you on the flip side. Keep spinning.